when you're going camping quite often the things that you need to carry add up to quite a weight and the temptation is to spend lots of extra money in order to buy lightweight gear in order to lighten that load but this video hopefully what we'll do is talk about how you can reduce the weight of particularly the big four uh, without having to spend lots of money so put your wallets and purses away and let's see what we can do when you want to start saving weight on what you're carrying it makes sense to focus on the heaviest items first as that's where most of the savings can be found and we often talk about the big four and these are the the four biggest items most backpackers will need to carry and that includes your shelter your sleeping pad your sleeping bag and your rucksack now one option is to use a tarp rather than a tent because at the budget end a tarp is typically lighter weight than a tent will be uh, but if you do use a tarp like this what you've got to remember is you also need to think about the ground because you're going to need something to protect yourself from the the damp ground because your sleeping bag will get wet if you just lie on this uh, so you do need something now typically that would be something like a waterproof bivy and you know that can weigh anywhere between 500 grams and 1.5 kilos at the budget end depending on what you go for now if i go for a more substantial bivy bag like this one which is the dutch army hooped bivy then i can make do with a much smaller uh, tarp uh, you perhaps even use something like a poncho instead to save weight and if the weather's really good i could even do without completely and save weight that way like this another thing to point out is if i do opt for an enclosed bivy bag like this one it generally sleep a little bit warmer than i would in a tent so i make do potentially with a slightly lighter sleeping bag as well now whether you choose to sleep in a tent or a tarp or any other ground-based system you're still going to have to have something to lie on to protect you from the damp ground and insulate you from it to keep you warm like this sort of sleeping pad now if you want something other than a simple foam mat something with a bit of padding in to give you any comfort then at the budget end of the market then these will typically weigh anywhere between about 750 grams and about a kilo so it's quite a lot of weight to carry around but what about if I'm not sleeping on the ground? Well, if I'm in a hammock like this one, I don't need to carry a big, heavy, padded sleeping mat for comfort because this hammock gives me all of the comfort that I need. I just don't need to worry about a bivy bag to uh, keep me yeah, from the damp floor because I'm well above the ground with this. So this will keep me well out of the way of any dampness from the ground. So I can actually save quite a lot of weight by using a hammock instead. Now I do often find that the budget end of camping equipment a hammock based system is often a lot lighter than a ground based system for the equivalent price and yes i do know you can get really good super light tents and super light bivvies but the tents come in a lot more expensive and this is all about saving weight from the big four when you're on a bit of a budget now let's look at some worked examples and i'm only going to focus on dd hammocks just because i know that range i've been using them for years but i'm not sponsored by them it's just a product i happen to to really like now, if you've got the ultimate lightweight setup from DD Hammocks, you'd go for something like the super light tarp and the super light hammock, and that's going to weigh 850 grams, and it's only going to cost 134 pounds. And that is astounding when it comes to kind of lightweight camping. Now, you can get tents that weigh less than that, but you're going to pay three times the price. So in terms of price to weight, that's a really sweet deal, I think. Now, if we're looking for extreme budget, we could use something like the DD Hammocks uh, Camping Hammock and the DD Hammocks Tarp Size M. And together, that's going to have a combined weight of about 1.4 kilos, but it's going to cost only about £70. So it's about half the price, uh, but it's about 65% heavier. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, I think for 1.4 kilos, that is a very manageable weight. And it's actually lighter than just the, the Dutch RB Hoop Bivy alone. So it is a very manageable weight still, and it's definitely at a price point I think most people should be able to afford. But the sweet spot for me, and what I would definitely do if I was buying my equipment from you again, is I'd go for the DD Camping Hammock, which is the one I already have, and I would pair that with the DD Super Light Tarp. Because combined, that weighs just 920 grams, which is a very manageable weight, and that only costs £105. So it's a bit of a bargain. Now, if you are going to sleep in a hammock, one thing I recommend is that you save some money and don't buy a down sleeping bag, but get one with an artificial filling instead. Because bags have evolved a lot now. Now, I've got two bags that are about the same sort of uh, size and weight, both 800 grams. Uh, they both have the same temperature rating, which is two to seven degrees. The biggest differences are is this one, which is the down one, compresses down a lot smaller and it costs about three times as much. 
Now, when it comes to sleeping in a hammock, you don't want your sleeping bag to compress. And the reason for that is, as you lie on your bag, uh, on your hammock, and it's like, and you, you compress your sleeping bag underneath, it loses its loft, therefore it loses its insulation, and you lose heat. And you get what's known as hammock cold bum. It's a really common thing. Uh, so actually, if you've got a sleeping bag that doesn't compress as much, you just stay that little bit warmer, and therefore it's a better thing altogether. But what about in winter, I hear you ask? And yes, you're right. In winter, you do really need something like an underquilt to keep you warm in the winter, to give you kind of insulation from below. Because you're lying on that sleeping bag, it tends to compress and it doesn't work as well. So an underquilt's kind of essential. But, you know, an underquilt is gonna weigh about a kilo. Uh, you know, and that is still about the same weight as a sleeping pad. So you haven't really lost anything. So I'd say this is, weight-wise, you know, it's probably equivalent in winter, but in summertime, you can definitely make some really good savings in terms of weight. So we've talked about all of the big four now, apart from the rucksack. And the synergy there with the rest of your components is, the lighter and more compact the other components, the lighter and more compact your rucksack can be. And it's that simple. That said, there is an argument, and I think it's a bit of a good one, that if you carry a heavier, more structured pack with better padded shoulders and a hip belt, that it does actually make carrying heavier loads feel like it's less. So after trying a couple of unstructured packs, I would actually agree with that. Today I've got the Sabre 45, and I'm carrying about 34 pounds because I've got various different uh, sleep systems in there, and it actually carries very well indeed. I'm not feeling it dig in, and I'm not worrying about it too much. So yeah, I think when it comes to your rucksack, when well, you can have an ultralight one, personally, I would go for something a bit more substantial, something that has a a stiff back because that helps distribute the load hip belts and a chest strap it's definitely worth the extra weight in the coming weeks i'll do another video on how you can save more weight in your pack outside of the big four and if you don't want to miss that one subscribe and i'll see you there